Hello, my friends, and welcome back to J Club Sport. So today I want to thank you. Thank you very much because we have reached and surpassed the 5,000 subscribers threshold. And this means a lot because uh, now the next big milestone will be 10,000. And from that stage, I think it will be much easier for me to engage with uh, the supplying companies and to get more parts to review out of the best ones that I find on the market. Also, for now, I am quite satisfied for what, what we are doing, what we are achieving, and I hope that the level of uh, information is good. And on this hand, the first people I want to thank among you all is uh, calling WRC, uh, Pirksman928, Keith Markham, Shustar, uh, Christ and Dassa, Tajem, Fred Dumont, Honza Collar, Dr. Dieta, Marco S., Steve Johnson, uh, Martin Puchet, and Paul Neath, and the Freshness, that in fact was the first uh, club sporter that subscribed. So thank you very much because your personal uh, advanced memberships are supporting my work very much indeed. And also, I want to ask you if, please, you want to reach out to me to engage and uh, ask me for any uh, comments, any ideas, any support in your tuning mods. I am here for you guys. And on the other hand, if you have some topics you would like me to talk about, of course, I can organize this in upcoming videos. Not a problem at all. So this can be done. So today is, um, uh, let's say, let's call it a weekly update. So I want to tell you a bit of what's going on. I've been quite busy off camera trying to talk with uh, suspension companies and differential companies because I'm seeing uh, what the next steps can be on suspension because we are still missing an accessible four-way suspension coilover kit that possibly can also be TOV homologated. And I've got talks open. I've got uh, two very good possibilities and uh, we are analyzing the situation here. So the idea would be uh, possibly to make two kits, one one-way kit and one four-way kit that are validated in the specifications and validated in uh, car testing by myself and therefore with the guarantee that they have the damping am amplitude and the performance we are looking for for real. And I mean, on the four-way kit, I want to see world-class performance and this car deserves it. And on the one-way kit, I want to see since the, the, the damping amplitude is, let's say, limited, I would like to see uh, how this can, uh, let me say, be tuned in the best way to put it in the window that is the best for this car. So this is very, very exciting and it will be upcoming. Of course, I cannot disclose names or anything this for the moment, but it's something I'm working on. I want you guys to know about it. And on the other hand, differentials. Pa -pa -pan. Okay, so differentials, uh, we all know the problem with the GIRs. I mean, let alone who come, who has got the GIRs that is not a circuit pack, therefore without the torsion differentials, who does have torsion differentials by now may know that they do have various shortcomings. And in particular, the fact is that by the way the standard torsion differential works, the fact is that um, the torque applied will move both wheels until both wheels have got a certain degree of traction. But if one wheel is off the ground or has zero traction, the fact is that the differential opens. Therefore, you have only traction on one, on one wheel and this results in uh, uh, the car losing grip, the car behaving strangely, and uh, the car possibly advancing laterally instead of going, pro being propelled forwards by, by the wheels that work together. So this does not happen. So what are the fixes? What are the opportunities on the market? I've been doing a lot of research and as usual, it's very difficult 
uh, to understand exactly what's happening with the parts in Japan, I was very interested in understanding better the, the plated clutch LSAD, LSD used on uh, the trophy cars uh, here in Italy in rally. And this is in fact the same part that you find uh, in uh, the Toyota uh, GRMN and on the special versions that you see like the, the Calero Vampera and um, Sebastien Ogier edition cars. This part apparently is very, very expensive. We're talking about uh, 3,500 euros. That is a really important amount of money for me, really too much for a differential. And we're talking only of the rear, but ideally you would want to change them both, uh, especially, I mean, if you were to move, for example, to a sequential gearbox, in that case, you would probably find uh, already a plated differential within the new gearbox. But if you're keeping the standard gearbox that is better to, to let's say, street the car every day, in that case, you would have to upgrade to get the maximum out of your car. So uh, the options are, therefore, OS Jinken makes a very good option uh, that I have not personally tested. I would like to test, but obviously I can't um, take three or four different differentials and test them all on my car because just a workmanship behind it would be incredible apart from the cost of buying all the parts because remember I'm self-financing all of this still so uh, and these differential companies for the moment uh, nobody has stuck their head up to say okay we want to cooperate with you so this is the point. Cusco makes uh, uh, three or four different types of differentials and um, talking of plated differentials, and then there is uh, the wave track option. So on the GR Yaris, ideally, uh, I would like to see a plated differential because uh, wave track still has, let's say, it fixes the problems of the classical torsion by putting some preload clutches. This means that it takes away the basic problem of torsion. And I believe this is one of the best differentials for balanced cars on the track because having still the torsion functioning but not the downsides, it's very easy to control the car when coming out of the curves and applying the throttle in very powerful cars especially because it's very progressive, because it works like a, a torsion. Uh, on the other hand, on the GR Yaris, uh, you want uh, differentials possibly plated that are stronger, that have more of an impact on how the car drives. This is because when you're on the limit, you would like to change the balance of the car with the traction, even at higher speeds. And for this, you need more preload and the clutch differential can do this. So West Jinken can do it, uh, Cusco can do it. Uh, I'm still studying the documentation from Cusco because there are three or four different types and uh, both the engagement angles and uh, the internals are different between them. And uh, in any case, I would settle for a one way or a one and a half way in the front and a one and a half way in the rear. And uh, because you, you never will want to go with a two way because this will lead to too much understeer. On the, on the other hand, fortunately, once you install a uh, TCU, a trans transmission controller unit on the GI Yaris, you can decide uh, how the center differential disengages upon release. So this will help you a lot because this will make uh, the impact of a one and a half way rear differential much smaller in terms of oversteer because you can factor in what you need through the center differential. And this is a very good addition that maybe not everybody thinks about, but it's possible. And the Cyvex module to do this is in the ballpark of seven, 800 euros. So it's not a crazy expense and you can have it programmed. And after that, even change the programming yourself through time by testing the car, but hey, don't go to, to extremes because it can be dangerous. In fact, uh, to give you an example of how this works, Try to keep the car in normal mode. And to make this uh, uh, more evident, try to do this in the rain. 
So if you try to take the controls off in normal mode, you will only manage to take them partially off. But while braking, if you corner in normal mode, you will see that when unbalancing a bit the car, maybe with a Scandinavian flick or something, you will see that uh, the rear end moves much more freely than in the locked modes that are track and uh, race. This is because, in fact, uh, the rear differential is uh, uh, connected to a lesser degree. So the freer you let it, the more the car will tend to oversteer in cornering. And ideally, you would like a car that is perfectly balanced, not to oversteer it. And this will help you do it. Because, once again, uh, many people say, I, I cannot make the car oversteer, but this is because probably it's not driven in the right way. For example, myself, even when I do the gincanas uh, and all of that, I use the car in track mode because it's more balanced. The fact is that if you manage to go fast enough, you are already on the limit with the grip of the tires because you're using this grip to go sideways. And therefore, a neutral car that obviously has a bit of bias behind can help you rotate very well. Uh, when you have a strong balance behind, what happens is you're just losing time because the car is uh, uh, oversteering too much and you're just losing time sideways. This can be fun, I mean, to, 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 to play around with your friends, but even when you're doing serious Gymkhana work, you still want it in track, a bit like you know, no, rally cars themselves that are mostly 50-50, because the front wheels actually pull you out of the curve. So you can put the car sideways coming into a curve and then come out just with, let's say, an oversteer posture, but not with a full oversteer, because that's just slow. And uh, once again, uh, Acme Racing, my friends uh, Matteo Dasso and all of those can do this for you. And I'm sure that all, uh, all the Cyrix uh, dealers around the world can do this for you. And I think that by now they can even just send you the module, but I'm not sure. It should be something they can program remotely and just send you and you install in the car like a plug and play unit and this works. But back to the differentials. Yes, I'm trying to, to understand which one is the best decision. And uh, I'm also trying to understand which the plans are with the car, because basically we are now at a crossroads. So uh, obviously this car is something I will keep in the years and probably I'll get uh, other GRs, we will see. Uh, I'm working on something else also very cool, but I can't talk about this now. and. Um, I have to understand where I want to, to go power-wise and transmission-wise because uh, the division here is, do I stay, let's say, in the 350 to 370, 400 ballpark uh, of uh, uh, horsepower and keep this on the standard gearbox or should I, and maybe shorten the final ratios because Cusco does make a kit for this that is very, very interesting to me. But in this case, I would be afraid of using the gearbox so much and then having problems with uh, the gear selectos and the synchro meshes, driving it very hard and changing gear much more. And uh, at the moment, my gearbox is working perfect, but, well, you never know. And... Uh, on the other hand, the other possibility is to put in, a, uh, let's say, a sequential gearbox. But in my opinion, at that stage, you should build the engine better and uh, make the car rev out at minimum to 7,500 revs, possibly higher than that. And this means that on top of doing all the head work and uh, the forged engine, you need a proper turbo kit. So I told you again that a very, very cool turbo kit that has nothing to do with what is uh, on the market at the moment is about to come out. Uh, 
uh, they are in the final tests of uh, testing on the cars and they're about to move on the track in the testing and this will be super cool. So this could be an option. That also brings behind it a lot of other mods. So it becomes then a very focused car that will have only one, uh, one destination that will be possibly track or rallying and this is uh, a hill climb and this is what it can do. So I think that for now I will still need the convenience, but uh, this is, uh, is something I'm still thinking about. Another thing is if I stay with the first option that as now seems more probable, so the within 400 ballpark of power, uh, I also want to find uh, the best solution in catalyzers. I had spoken time ago with HJS about their catalyzing downpipe and uh, I want to talk with them again to understand uh, what flow they guarantee and to what uh, level of power uh, with this catalyzer and uh, catalyzing elements. And I also want to report back to you on this because I think it's very important. I'm not sure that there are any other solutions that actually are, uh, let's say, TUV compliant because if uh, somebody wants to move to another country or just have the car completely uh, compliant, like in, in countries where the controls are stricter, you really want this. And I want this too. And unfortunately, keeping the stock catalyzer isn't an option because it's just too much of a muffle on the engine and it stresses the turbo so much with the temperatures. So we will see what, uh, what we can do on this. All in all, uh, it's a very, very interesting time. I've seen various interesting parts coming out. I am discussing uh, with somebody for carbon body parts that uh, they may send me and I can install and show you and show the benefit because uh, two of these parts have got some real aerodynamic benefits and uh, therefore also this is an option. Once again, uh, the channel is growing, so the more it grows, the more these uh, companies will be happy of sending in parts for us to test them and, uh, and to review them. Of course, some are already happy to do this, but not all of them, and uh, let's see how it goes. So this was uh, just a weekly update to let you know what I'm thinking and what I'm doing. These topics are on the table. Please engage with me, write to me. Uh, obviously, if you haven't subscribed, let me know what you think and what you would like to see. So next week we can dive into only one specific subject more vertically and uh, give you feedback on that. So thank you for now. Ciao.